right, so for section 12C, I'm actually splitting up this section into a couple different videos. And I'm doing this because I think one video would probably be 30 to 45 minutes long, which is way too much for y'all to get in one setting. And I think it'll be easier to kind of break it up into different chunks. And that way, if you need to go back and look at something again, you can just go to that one video and get what you need without having everything else in the way. So in this section, we're talking about apportionment. And apportionment is a process that we use anytime we need to divide people or objects among a group. So we'll be talking a lot about apportionment with the state, United States House of Representatives and how do we divide the 435 representatives fairly among the population of the United States. We can also use apportionment to split students up on a set number of buses or divide um, teachers among different schools with different numbers of students or any situation where we're splitting things up. But we'll be talking a lot about the U.S. House. And in the United States, we have the House of Representatives and then we have the Senate. And the Senate is set up where every single state, regardless of its size, has two senators. But the House of Representatives is divvied up based on population. So the more populated a state is, the more representatives it has in the U.S. House. So we're going to be looking at how do we do that fairly, and we'll see that's actually very, very hard to do. It's hard to define what fair is. So the first thing we need to talk about is what's known as the standard divisor. And in our context, the standard of divisor, the standard divisor is the average number of people per seat for the House of Representatives. So what we do to get the standard divisor is we take our total U.S. population and we divide it by the number of seats, which is 435, to see how many people basically represent or vote for each seat if it's done completely evenly. So the standard divisor takes the whole population divided by the number of seats to see how many people are voters for each seat in the House of Representatives. Then we take our standard divisor and we use it to calculate the standard quota. And the standard quota is going to tell us how many seats each state would get if everything was done completely fairly. Different states have different populations, so the standard quota takes each state's population and divides it by the standard divisor. So we're taking the population of the state, and then we divide it by the number of people that vote per seat to tell us the number of seats that that state is going to get. But the problem with this is, almost always you come out to fractional seats. So maybe one state would get 2.7 seats in the House of Representatives, and you can't vote for 0.7 of a person, so that doesn't work. So we have to find ways to divide the 435 representatives fairly among the 50 states without cutting people in half, <laughs> since we can't do that. So let's look at an example. So the United States House of Representatives has 435, and as of the 2010 census, the population of the United States is 308.7 million people. In this census, we have 989,000 for Montana and 564,000 for Wyoming. Let's use these numbers to find the standard quota. And in order to find the standard quota, we have to start by finding the standard divisor. So our total population is 308.7 million people and we have 435 representatives. To find the standard divisor, we take our total population and we divide it by the number of representatives to get 709,655.17 people per representative. So basically, if everything was done fairly, there would be that 709,000 number of people voting for each member of the House of Representatives. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to round that up to 710,000 people per representative because the population of the U.S. is always changing. People are always being born and always dying. A census number is just the best estimate. And just to make our numbers easier, we're going to round that up to 710,000. Typically in problems, we won't, but just for this one, since the numbers are so big, we're going to. So now we have our standard divisor. We want to find our standard quota. So the quota tells us how many seats each state gets. So we take our state population and we divide it by the standard divisor. So this is telling how many voters it takes to get one seat. So in Montana, we have 989,000 voters and every 710,000 people make up one representative. So when we divide that, we see that Montana should get 1.4 representatives. Wyoming has a smaller population. It only has 564,000 people 
And if you divide that by the 710,000 that it takes to get a representative, you get 0.79 representatives in Wyoming. When they did the 2010 apportionment, the representatives ruled that every state had to get at least one representative. And it actually worked out that both Montana and Wyoming were awarded one member of the House of Representatives based on the census. So since Montana's standard quota is 1.4, they should have 1.4 people representing them and they only had one, they're a little underrepresented. Montana doesn't have as much say in the running of the House as they should based on population. But Wyoming only had enough people to get 0.79 of a representative and they were awarded one whole person. So they're overrepresented. So you can see there's problems here because we can't cut up people and have 0.4 or 0.79 of a person. We have to have whole people. And so by nature of splitting it up, we're going to have some states feeling underrepresented, uh, underrepresented and others being overrepresented. Let's look at another example. So a small school district is reappointing its 14 elementary teachers among three elementary schools. And the enrollment figures are shown on the next slide. So if you have it printed out, you might want to take a look right quick. We want to find the standard quota for the number of teachers per school. So to find the standard quota, we start by finding the standard divisor. So we need to take our total number of students and divide it by the number of teachers to see how many students will go to each teacher. So again, these numbers are on the next slide, but we have 197, and then 106, and then 145 students at our three different schools, and we have 14 teachers. So when we do that math, we see that there should be 32 students per teacher. So to find the standard quota for each school, we take its population and divide it by the 32 students per teacher. So Washington Elementary has 197 students. Every 32 of them get a teacher, so it should have 6.15 teachers. Same thing for Lincoln and Roosevelt. And if you add up those three standard quotas, they will add exactly to 14, showing that we're splitting up our 14 teachers. But again, we have a problem because we can't have partial people at the three different schools. One more example. Suppose there is a county or a country with four small states. We're going to call them state A, B, C, and D. And we have the populations of these four states as 936 people, 2,726 people, 2,603, and then 3,735. These four states are going to create a legislature with 100 seats, and we want to find the standard divisor and standard quotas for this country. So again, to find the standard divisor, we take our total population and divide it by the number of legislatures to see how many people represent each representative. So when we add up our total population, we get 10,000 people, divide it by the number of seats, which was 100, and we see that we have 100 voters per seat. Then we'll take each of our countries, or each of our counties, and divide it by the number, or divide it by the standard divisor to see how many representatives that state gets. So for state A, there were 936 people, Every 100 person makes up a representative, so 936 divided by 100 tells us that state A should have 9.36 representatives. And you can do the same thing for the other three states. So this is the end of video one. You will find the rest of the videos on your Blackboard page, and they will be in Excel going through the examples that are in the rest of the PowerPoint. So I will see you in them.